Hi, I'm Eric Himes, president of the California Teachers Association. CTA has a long history of civil rights, from ensuring funding for schools that taught non-white students in 1867 to protesting the internment of Japanese Americans during World War II. CTA has worked to ensure ethnic minority representation in the California Teachers Association. CTA's Ethnic Minority Affairs Committee monitors ethnic minority representation within CTA and provides ethnic minority input into CTA's membership programs and policies. EMAC makes recommendations recommendations to the CTA Board of Directors and works at having an association that is balanced, all-inclusive, and equity-minded with the overall goal of addressing the needs of California's diverse student population. We will not bow down to our racism. We will not bow down to injustice. We EMAC is necessary because it basically represents the conscience of the association. It ensures that the minority voice and the minority issues are continually addressed. We need to make sure that all of our members are reflected in the association. EMAC was needed because there was a lack of representation in the California Teachers Association of ethnic minority leadership. And if you look in the population of California, it didn't represent the educators, school personnel, and the students of California. If we looked out at CTA back before EMAC, it was a very homogeneous leadership group. We really needed to bring in all of the different kinds of voices and all of the different opinions. Our state was changing. Public opinions about things were changing. We really needed to make sure that we had all of the voices at the table. The history of EMAC comes from the time when Dr. Lois Tenson was a board member. Her and the other ethnic minority board member was a woman named June Stanford Clark. What the, they did was, along with some other ethnic minorities, what few ethnic minorities there were within CTA, mostly African American, Latino, and, and Asian, at that time, they developed the first Minority Affairs Committee. It didn't really represent all the ethnic minorities that were out there. It evolved over a number of years into people saying, we have to include everybody, Native American, GLBT, you name it. So it really truly encompassed everybody. It, I think it was a it was a form of evolution of the whole process. Because we are an association that's going to really need to be in touch with our ethnic minority communities as well as other communities, EMAC members comprise the different ethnic minorities that comprise the state, and we will need to really get their knowledge as far as how to properly address the benefits of being a union member, the benefits of being in CTA, and, and the different things that CTA needs to do to advocate for the different ethnic minority community. EMAC does a community engagement we listen, we engage with the EMAC forum, trying to get our ethnic minority members in state council to give us feedback, what is going on. We try to develop programs that or advise for programs to be made that can promote more ethnic minority voices. Making sure that we have more ethnic minorities involved in teaching, encourage individuals to be involved at the local level in leadership roles. EMAC created the Ethnic Minority Early Identification Program, which helps bring new minority leaders into the CTA. The reason that that program started was because many of our local ethnic minority leaders did not know that there were steps that they could take or there were opportunities within CTA that they could move towards. Without that, um, we don't surface leaders that have all kinds of experiences. We have in the Pacific Asian American Caucus, we have a Hmong teacher. 20 years ago, there were probably no Hmong teachers in the state. And now we have a Hmong leader in our organization. He brings with him a very different experience. Um, he teaches us about his culture, tells us how to deal with his children. And that's what EMEID is important. The early identification program, if you're an ethnic minority leader, you need to learn to bring one. You need to learn to look back and bring people. Identify those that are in the classroom or, or uh, are ESP 
or other duties within CTA that they may or may not know that there are opportunities for leadership advancement as well as staff because you're the early ID, uh, you have to make a choice. And a lot of these members don't know. So it's, it's an opportunity to really look at the, at the pool of ethnic minorities out there. If we do not really represent our ethnic minorities or have an understanding of what goes on in those, it will be difficult in political election, elections because the communities are growing. So as their political uh, clout grows, if CTA is not there, then it makes it more difficult for us to explain to them why we, they need to vote to help us on these elections. And again, it's the children. Population in California ethnically has changed. CMAC works to, to try to find ways where we can reach out into those communities to say that, you know, they are all here and that public education will benefit them. We need to continue to be vigilant and continue to advocate for public education for all students in California, making sure in, or ensuring that ethnic minorities do not lose out, given all the trends that are happening under No Child Left Behind or the charter school movement or alternative credentialing programs and so forth. I want to see EMAC continue to bring forth the voices of all teachers. Of course, minorities, but when we say all teachers, it's all teachers. Every one of our families wants their child to be successful. And I don't think right now our system makes sure every one of our children is successful. So we could do better if we listened, engaged our communities, built schools that met the needs of all the children. It might look different, and every school might look different. Then I think truly we'll have no need for EMAC. But until then, mm, we've got lots of work to do.